Anna Beasley is trying to unseat Steve Irons for the coalition, and speaking here is the treasurer, Josh Frydenberg. Of new taxes. So we can make these announcements like the $20 million today for this new aquatic centre because we have a strong economy, because more jobs are being created, because taxes are lower under a coalition. Steve. Thank, thank you, Josh. And I might just ask uh, the Mayor of South Perth to say, Sue Doherty, to say a few words about the announcement. Thank you, Steve, and thank you very much, Treasurer. Um, the, the City of South Perth and our community of South Perth. Um, for us, this is a significant win, and we sincerely thank the coalition, and in particular um, to our local member for Swan, um, Steve Irons, for his long support and advocacy on our behalf. This money will provide a significant contribution to this facility, which we believe will cost over $70 million. And as um, the Treasurer identified, over one million people will come to it. It's a combined recreation and aquatic facility, and it will meet the needs of our neighbouring local governments and also the Curtin University um, students and staff. So thanks again, um, Thank Josh. you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Uh, Doherty. I might also ask uh, uh, Vice Chancellor Deborah Terry to make a few comments, as we have strong support and have had strong support in the whole journey from the um, Curtin University. So, thanks, Deborah. Thank you very much, Steve, and thank you, Treasurer, for this very welcome announcement. Obviously, Curtin University is just across the road, a very significant campus. Uh, we have about 30,000 students who study on the campus. Uh, they will make terrific use of this new facility. It will help attract international students to Western Australia uh, and to our university. It will be part of uh, a whole sporting precinct. We obviously have an elite hockey uh, facility on our campus as well as a major stadium and this will just add to those facilities for the use of the community but also for the use of our students and staff. So thank you, Treasurer. Thank you, Steve, for your strong support of the proposal, and it's a you know very exciting news uh, to hear the support. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Vice Chancellor. For myself, a personal uh, thank you to all the people who've supported this project along the way since 2011. It's coincidental that it was May the 18th, uh, 2011. We, we did our first press release to try and uh, drum up support for this particular facility, and uh, now as we come to an election on May the 18th in 2019. It uh, is great to have uh, the Treasurer come and announce the $20 million election commitment. So we might take, just take some questions uh, regarding the announcement and then we'll move to questions uh, to the Treasurer after that, if possible. So any questions for Josh or the stakeholders regarding yeah, the aquatic the facility? Is available, Treasurer? Is, is, this, uh, is this another infrastructure uh, <coughs> promise that will be delivered at the end of the 20s? Or? Uh, is this going to happen sooner? Well, as talking to the stakeholders, they think this will be built within four years and obviously the money will be available as soon as it is needed. Uh, and obviously it's a $70 million facility. This is a $20 million commitment, so a substantial proportion of that. Uh, but as you can see, there's strong stakeholder support. Uh, strong stakeholder support from the university, from the local council, and I understand also from the state government. And clearly there's a need in this community with over a million people uh, of all ages uh, and uh, of all swimming abilities who will be able to access this new facility. Well, Steve has been an outstanding local member and will continue to win the respect and the trust of his local community, as he has done in the past. But strong local members like Steve advocate for important local community projects. And you've heard here, uh, in a non-partisan way, uh, from the university, from, uh, from the local council, about the importance of this project. And I can say to you, whether you go around the country, uh, in various communities, uh, recreational uh, sporting projects are important. Infrastructure uh, such as this is important to the health of our community. Healthy lives mean longer lives, mean stronger communities. But you can only invest a sum of $20 million in a substantial piece of infrastructure such as this if you have a strong economy. And our economy is continuing to grow. Our economy uh, is growing uh, second only in speed to the United States uh, among the G7 nations. We've created more than a million new jobs and we've produced a budget which for the first time in more than a decade is in surplus paying back Labor's debt. So this is what you get from a strong economy. This is the dividend. Record spending on schools and hospitals and on important infrastructure projects. Still short. Sure. 
Well, we'll be focusing uh, on working with our local members across uh, Western Australia. And the fact is, uh, the people of Western Australia understand what a threat Bill Shorten is to their economy here in Western Australia. He was late to the game on getting a fairer uh, GST a distribution here for Western Australia. And as you know, Scott Morrison as Treasurer and then as Prime Minister strongly supported that fairer deal. And it was the coalition uh, that was able to get a much fairer uh, share of the GST for the people of Western Australia. We've also invested significantly in infrastructure projects and people across Western Australia, whether they're in this electorate or in others, they don't want a retirees tax, they don't want a housing tax, they don't want a super tax, they don't want higher taxes on their income and they don't want higher taxes on their business. All things which Bill Shorten and his $387 billion will deliver to the Australian people. Andrea, are you ever blowing this issue at the Labor Party's website? The are we going to just, before we get there, Lene, do we have any more questions on the poll? Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> Sorry, yes. Are you ever blowing this issue on the Labor Party's website? The Coalition's own website is light on detail and this morning was apparently down. Is this just a side issue that you're using to distract from a lack of? Well, the Coalition website has an enormous amount of detail. In fact, I was looking through its economic plan again just this morning and it spells out what we have delivered for the Australian people and what we'll continue to deliver. But let's put this in perspective. Well, there's, there's a number of policies on there, including an extensive economic plan, which is the heart of a stronger community, which is the heart of other policies that we also announce. But let's not, get it, let's not forget what's happened here. Chris Bowen insulted over a million retirees by saying, if you don't like Labor's policy on the retirees tax, well then don't vote for us. No colleagues of his backed him up. Then he turned up at the press club with the wrong numbers in his own policy on negative gearing. Now, just a few days into the campaign, he hasn't taken issue with our $387 billion number for Labor's higher taxes, number, a number which is based on Treasury costings. But also, he's had to take down from his website and embarrass his leader on two critical tax policies that they're putting to the Australian people at this election. A new housing tax, which is coming at exactly the wrong time for the housing sector, which the Master Builders Association said will cost 32,000 jobs and see 42,000 fewer homes being built, and their retirees tax and their policies around superannuation. I mean, the Australian people deserve to know what will be the impact of Labor's $387 billion of higher taxes? It doesn't matter what the question is, Labor's answer is always higher taxes. We're delivering record spending on schools, on hospitals, on infrastructure, getting more people into apprenticeships, more money on mental health, more drugs being listed on the PBS. Without increasing taxes, the same cannot be said about Bill Shorten, and he doesn't even understand his own policies. He can't explain his new superannuation taxes. Just yesterday, Bill Shorten told a lie straight down to the camera. He said Labor was not increasing super taxes. Well, he had to be corrected by both his shadow treasurer and shadow finance minister because Labor has $34 billion of higher super taxes, including making it more difficult for women who leave the workforce to raise a child to come back into the workforce and make additional catch-up contributions to their superannuation. You mentioned Heathrow being handed down later this afternoon. Yes. Are you getting your press conference out of the way now to avoid answering that detail later? I will be doing media, both pre- and post PFO, and I think it's really important that we pay a lot of attention to what our Treasury finds in, uh, in the PFO because, as you know, the budget was just handed down uh, less than two weeks ago, and in that document it said that the Australian economy would continue to grow strongly. It said that the Coalition uh, is producing a surplus of $7.1 billion in 2019-2020, a $55 billion turnaround from the debt that we inherited from the Labor Party, that we'll have surpluses uh, over the forward estimate that will be paying back Labor's debt by the end of the decade and that will be creating 80,000 new apprentices and guaranteeing uh, record spending on schools and hospitals. So this PFO announcement is very important, but also uh, this infrastructure announcement as well, and I'll have plenty to say after PFO is handed down. Bruce Bowen says that Labor's super changes will add $30 billion to the budget over a decade. Are you, are you embarrassed that your $34 billion estimate has been proven wrong? Well, the $34 billion is based on a Treasury costing of an alternative policy, which just so happens to be the Labor policy. 
Now, the fact is Chris Bowen has talked in the past about how these superannuation concessions actually strengthen the Australian economy. Yesterday, Bill Shorten didn't even know or da dared to admit or, in fact, told the Australian people a clear lie. Take your choice. That Labor was increasing superannuation taxes by $34 billion. You see, the, Bill Shorten can't even give a straight answer to, his, to, the, to the press pack travelling with him, when he does give an answer, by the way. And on superannuation, just as on retirees, just as on housing, you will pay higher taxes under Labor. Should taxpayers be paying the bill for George Christensen's connecting flight? Last question. Well, George Christensen uh, has ex explained uh, that he... Uh, believes he, everything that he has done in relation to this has uh, been consistent with uh, the processes uh, under entitlements, and at the same time he has referred it to the independent if it's process. Rules, do the rules need to change? Because it's clearly personal travel. Well, like I said, George has commented on that, it's and he's actually. Travel. You're the treasurer. Surely you could use that money better elsewhere. Well, George has has made the point that it, he's referred it to an independent process. But what I do say uh, is that with the coalition. Uh, we are ensuring that we're strengthening the Australian economy. We're overseeing the first surplus in more than a decade. Uh, we're lowering taxes. Uh, people here in Swan uh, who earn up to $126,000 will get up to $1,080 in their pockets in 11 weeks' time. So if you're a tradie or a teacher here in Swan and you're a couple, and plenty, of them. plenty of them, you'll get $2,160 <clears throat> in your pocket in just 11 weeks' time, courtesy of the tax changes that the Coalition has announced. You'll also, if you're a small business, and there are plenty of those in Swan too... 18,000. Um, 18,000. They're going to get uh, the access to the instant asset write-off, which has been increased to 30,000. Now, um, uh, Steve, before going into politics, was a sparky electrician, so he knows the importance of having apprenticeships, and we're creating 80,000 new apprentices, as well as the heavy investment here in West Australia on infrastructure, which is really important. All of this is the outcome from a strong economy, and it's only with a strong economy that you can spend more on hospitals, spend more on schools, list more drugs on the PBS, and invest more in infrastructure, including this announcement today. So the Labor Party... They'll talk a big game, but the track record is delivering something very different. Higher taxes for all Australians, higher taxes on your business, higher taxes on your super, higher taxes on retirees, higher taxes on your home and higher rents for everyone who rents their own home. Thank Andrew, you. Just quickly on infrastructure in WA. Uh, sure. You've announced about $1.6 in the recent budget. It's more coming every day. Uh, Labor have announced $1.7 for, for WA. Uh, the majority... Josh Frydenberg there, the Treasurer, speaking in Perth, the seat of Swan, currently held by the Coalition, Steve Irons, and uh, the...